Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. We have with us a brand new guest for the month of October. We're very excited. He is a good referral from Derek Johnson, and this is Brad Wozny. Uh, I've had a chance to talk with this fine gentleman here, and he's got some great information for us regarding his testimony, his background, and of course, he's also going to help us uncover his perspective with, with respect to Nasara, the Dasara, and the global reset that we are all well ensconced. So if you're new to the podcast, please do like, subscribe, and share to help the channel grow, and I will be reading his bio thusly. Brad Wozni is a former Canadian infantry soldier, hell attack firefighter for a decade or more. As an entrepreneur prior to the pandemic, he was a media producer for two-time optioned Hollywood screenwriter with multiple projects in development. Brad is the only known truther who has stood at ground zero for rescue efforts that went on visually confirming that the three World Trade Centers were dropped in their footprint, then 72 hours later, flew up to the Pentagon with high-level security access, was 18 stories below it. Brad saw emails confirming a missile was fired into it, coupled with witness accounts of colleagues. Having lawfully and legally lived in the USA, uh, Inc., across a span of two decades while in Vancouver, BC, after flight restrictions during lockdown were lifted to return, Brad immediately flew to his loved ones. While there, the deep state regime brought out vaccine passports and masks, refusing to wear a mask and taking the bioweapon for travel, Brad stood guard for his family. Later, not having complied with the Nuremberg Code and human rights violations, Customs and Border Patrol minions under Mayorkas refused Brad to return to the USA, Inc. He is now banned until 2033, where all of his awake patriots and loved ones currently reside. Despite letters to senators, governors, congressmen, and women, Mayorkas and DHS Oversight Chair Mark Green of Tennessee appealing to their humanity to allow Brad to return and his, to his projected loved ones by remarkable patriots such as Lee Dundas, Michael Jaco, uh, Paul Valley, Bishop Jim O'Connor, Clayton Thomas, uh, Rob Cunningham, and S.G. and on, amongst many others, it has fallen on deaf ears. Brad remains a targeted individual by the deep state as declared by Scott McKay, S.G. and on, Scotty Sachs, Michael Jaco, and others. A speaker on the Truth Tour with Derek Johnson, Brad has written, produced, and hosted nearly 600 episodes of the Sovereign Soul Show, whose creed is love, levity, and liberty. Brad is co-signed with USA Army Major General Paul E. Valley, retired. Norman Traversi and Quo Warrento served as Canada's deep state apparatus. Uh, later with MG Valley and Norman Traversy, Traversy, they signed and sent letters to the U.S. military's JAG unit, Commander-in-Chief Trump, ICC, and UN Human Rights Commission in order to arrest and investigate all branches for war crimes and treaty violations. And during the anniversary of the Canadian Freedom Convoy, Brad's personal bank accounts were seized without warning by China, emptied and closed without warning. Brad continues to host the Sovereign Soul Show, Soul Show from other continents with faith that uh, CIC Commander Chief Trump will allow his safe return to the Republic of North America as soon as possible, where he will continue in service to serve on God's light. With all that said, Brad Wadney, thank you for joining us on the podcast. How are you doing today? Yeah, doing all right. Thank you very much, John. It's an honor to be here with you and your audience. Yeah, it's an honor to have you. So we know that you're pressed for time with your with your schedule. So can you kind of walk people through who don't know you a bit about your your testimony and how you got here today? Yeah, I mean, that kind of covered it, you know, to summarize once again, you know, I was back in the Canadian Light Infantry, and uh, that kind of was my red pill moment that the government's not here for you because I was part of the three and a half thousand soldiers who weren't paid for 10 months, but they expected you to still show up, stand to, and be deployed when necessary. You know, I was only deployed uh, domestically in that, and um, and I was top five to go to uh, F-18 fire school, but in Canada, you had to go through a military college and they gave me the 2020 vision test and I failed the 2020 vision test. So like, what do you do? So you have all the marks and calculus. So I went off and did an honors economics, went to do an ec honors economics and political science degree, serve in the Canadian infantry to go reg force, but I didn't get paid uh, for 10 months, about two years in. So that was a, a red pill moment. And then the second red pill moment for me, um, which you mentioned in the bio is uh, at that time I was working for Rim Blackberry as a sales and business development manager between New York and the Pentagon teams. And since I was living at West 57, the Broadway for one to two weeks a month, whenever I'd fly in from Toronto, um, you know, I had an established clientele from the legal and financial services vertical, all the way from uh, World Trade Centers uh, up, up and down Wall Street, plus 
I was running relationships for Booz Allen, Hamilton, Deloitte Consulting, EDS, which are huge government contractors for systems integration for BlackBerry. And at the time, that was called CrackBerry on Wall Street. So as a result of that, I had personal relationships and peers and colleagues who were down there in Wall Street and also at the Pentagon. And we have it on the RIM network operation knock centers, servers, you know, missile, 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 missile strike. When they finally opened the airspace, we were declined to go down uh, before that, I was down there, got to see the rescue efforts, part of the BlackBerry representation, if anybody knows at that time, we were the only ones that uh, were operational. Now we know later on that actually the cell phone towers were blocked when they used the directed energy weapons to take down everything because of the rollout we saw was Nasara Jasara due to be rolled out. Remember on September 10th, Rumsfeld came out and said, there's $2 trillion that have went missing we can't account for in our audit. And all of a sudden, September 11th on, According to Bishop Jim O'Connor, with his 777 access uh, book access to books of the Bible, um, sorry, access to 777 books of the Bible, um, that is Christ's Conception Day, 9/11. When you look at it from Gematria and from the uh, Judaic uh, calendar system, right? So that's interesting. They did that, isn't it? Right? And that World Trade Center Tower Seven, which I actually had clients in who said they've been telling us to evacuate places. I have actually been for meetings for BlackBerry at that point in time, collapse in its footprint. Now we know that that was part of Nassara Jassara being rolled out. Now we know that there were the Delta Force guys who put a gun in Clinton's face when he was in the White House and they said, sign this or die, right, for the Nassara Jassara papers. And we now know since Laura Eisenhower and President uh, John F. Kennedy that the White Hats and President Eisenhower have been, been building this to this point in time, this crescendo for this entire worldwide military alliance. You just have my personal friend, Derek Johnson on, uh, consistently on your program. So everybody can see this in executive orders, law and orders. This is not a conspiracy. Directed energy weapons have existed since 1851. The patents are all there in the U.S. Patent Trademark Office, the most recent one in 2020. So we're only four years after. My sister worked at CSIS and red pilled me on HARP in 2002. And that was in, you know, uh, Alaska at then, at that point in time. Now we know that they're using dues that are flying around on aircraft satellites and uh, towed arrays on uh, surface frigates and uh, surface ships and can use it in submarines. So the fact is that it's to take down our financial system of sovereignty as a sovereign soul and, and be enslaved to them through Patriot Act and all this other stuff. And that's why it's important that your show gets the information and the news out there so people can protect themselves financially as well as being clued up into what the, the true thing is, right? This war on humanity. I hope that's helpful. Oh, very much. Actually, as I was listening to you, I was formulating my next thought to your, to your cogent comments. You might be the ideal person to ask about this because in our camp, um, we have seen in our little circle evidence, evidentiary proof of Nasara for a lot of people, you know, in the form of credit cards, student loans, medical bills, car payments, et cetera, et cetera. And all of its various idioms. Uh, since 2019, people come and said, hey, my, you know, this is forgiven. That's removed. I called the bank you know, and they, they can't answer me or I had a loan, you know, for a student loan or something as an example. I know, you know, all this, I'm just yep. walking through the, to the public uh, right. and I'll call the, uh, or I had a medical bill and I called the hospital and they not only said that I don't have a debt, they never had me on record. So they just expunged the record completely, let alone the debt right. itself. And people are sort of dumbfounded. So uh, I'll tell you a funny little story. Um, one of our team members, John G back in August of 2020, uh, fellow military person sent us, uh, which is why we never share this for confidentiality, but, but we remember it in our embers of our mind. It was a Wells Fargo statement, like you would get on a deposit transaction. Yeah. You go down the list of transactions. And it said in August of 2020, in capital letters, N-E-S-A-R, and the A was X'd out with wow. a six-figure amount deposited into the account. So this should excite people, but it also frustrates them because they're humans. And they're like, well, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't got anything. What about me, my, I? That's always the yep. mindset shift that we're getting. So sure. the question, Brad, that you can help our audience who's struggling with that is, since it has been started in 2001, as you rightly said, and President Trump or Commander Chief Trump, as you said, was on site in New York. And I was actually in New York myself during 9-11 over on uh, uh, Broadway in Washington over by NYU. So I was, oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, I was, you're, I was, you're like a next door neighbor to me in a way. I, yeah. I was working for a company doing sales and marketing at the time. And, and okay. I've told my testimony before, but I don't want, I want people to focus on you. So help us out with respect to the beginning Delta in 2001, as you articulated to what I've shared in 2019, 
obviously you can't give 100%, but when would most people who haven't sniffed it, received it, gotten any inkling of it, when would you surmise that they can sort of anticipate it coming into their purview? Right after it, we have freedom in the world. And let's just take a look at this for an example, right? Very simple hypothesis. Again, hypothesis. Let's just imagine that because you and I know that every man and woman under a commonwealth system, remember the USA incorporated, incorporated 1871, Canada Crown Corporation incorporated July 1st, 1867 in the District of Columbia. District of Columbia is its own city sovereign state. Then it reports to the city of London. Then it reports to the city of Vatican. So if until you take all the transnational criminal uh, terrorist crime syndicates out, why then would we turn around and go, we need to be have our hundreds of millions or billions of dollars? Will that really change the person and the people, right, all of a sudden? And this is also the cabal fiat currency system. So 2005 was my red pill on the um, financial security system in terms of creature from Jekyll Island. I read that. Uh, Back to back, right? Robert Allen then was my mentor, and so was Mark Victor Hansen, who co-wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to read this. Okay, wide awake, right? So then I went into the financial sovereignty in 2007 in Canada and the USA, Inc. And I say Inc. because people have to understand they're corporations. So first you have to go in when you're running a military operation, when you're going into, even if it's a law enforcement operation, right? You have to save the people, save the hostages and eliminate the threats before the next phase. So we are here, right? You are the hostages that the White Hat Military Alliance is saving. And this is a global thing. The entire planet of Earth, roughly 8 billion people, give or take whatever numbers you listen to, across multiple, we're one human race, this Earth. We are one human race under the great omnipresence of divinity, but we have multiple languages and multiple cultural barriers. So you look at what the president did on his global capitulation tour in 2017. You look what happened in 2018 when Major General Paul Vallely, this is the U.S. Army retired, the oldest general in West Point to lead troops in battle. He's turning 85 next month. I'm his producer and Lieutenant General McInery's producer for them at StandUpAmericaUS.org. This is on top of my sovereign soul show duties. And you look at that man and he facilitated that meeting between Putin, Presidents Putin and President Trump for that famous soccer ball handoff. And you know that Russia didn't play in the FIFA World Cup. This was the financial system turnover. We saw in March 20 of 2022, everybody remember, there was only two years, two years and a bit ago that they pulled, pulled Russia office, SWIFT and BIS, and they've formed BRICS. So all of these are relevant because you are the hostages to the state. The world has been held hostage in a financial standpoint from the fiat currency system that was created by the federal, nothing federal about it, the reserve, there's no reserves whatsoever. And it's like our president of El Salvador had to red pill Americans at CPAC in February this year and say, how do you print money? How do you make money? Where do your tax monies go, right? We print this and here's treasury and we say we owe you that. And it's just literally passing notes in the classroom in grade five. I owe you, I owe you, and that's it. And by the way, ha ha, let's go tell them that they owe us. Well, let's be a Canadian and get 52% tax before everything else, income tax, right? And all of that. So income, it's all voluntary. And people, we have been conditioned. I've had my awakening experience. You've had yours, right? Did I know there were 18 stories below the Pentagon? No. But when I showed up to the Pentagon 72 hours after being at ground zero, as the rescue efforts went on, I was flown up there and I stood at a Rumsfeld press conference and 12 minutes later, I'm taking pictures with him, not with him, excuse me, with my uh, contact at the lectern that he just gave his press conference at, and then I'm in the wing that had been hit by a missile. And yes, there's no way you're going to fly a 737 into that because it would be 23 to 25 times larger, the explosion with the fuel air mixture too. So the missile, plus we have that on emails, like you said, then you're 18 stories below it. Tie this back to where you are today, right? Give praise to a white hat military alliance that there's tens of millions of people and hundreds of millions have paid for their lives over the last nearly seven decades to get to this moment in time to change history forever. So we have peace, love, and harmony after the hostages, we the people, are rescued and the terrorists are eliminated, dragged out military tribunals. And then here you go. Here's your straw man back. Here is your access to the hundreds of millions or billions you're worth. Here's how we make sure we stabilize comedy with global economic security and reformation acts, right? Here's how the sovereign nations, not run by terrorist transnational criminal syndicate corporations, 
are actually meant to be to orchestrate and have law and order, common law and order across the land. Powerful. Indeed. It's very, even though we've, even though I've heard it a million times, been involved in it, it's great to get a, a different twist from a, a patriot and a subject matter expert like you, just to hear it in a different twist, a different iteration. It's, it's like hearing it for the first time all over again. It's fascinating. Uh, yeah. So, so it's, let's, it's, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it, it's really amazing. And, th and thank you. And thank you. Thank you to the White House. You know, thank you to you, John, for getting the information. But thank you to the White Hats, yeah. the military people in the shadows, the Julian Assange's of the world. There's been so, yeah. so many more. Right. We only we have we have just an inkling like an iceberg. We only see a bit of it. The rest There's a huge gargantuan bucket of truth for our entire history on this planet and elsewhere, um, which will unfold. But again, we have to allow, uh, we, and we have to do our part as the hostages with awakening and banding together and community and preparation around the world and assist our good saviors to help do our collective job together. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you actually brought, that was a, sort of a nice surprise uh, subject that you brought up. I wasn't thinking about until just this moment uh, regarding Julia Assange. You know, you're seeing him in an uptick of conversations more and more and yeah. more. That should be, so I want to get your take on that. That should be an indicator for most people if he's speaking out that the things are secured and he's been freed up. Is that fair to say? I think so. I, I you know, intuitively, yeah, I see that. I've been a Reiki master a decade, practicing 22. I've been trained in remote viewing by Michael Jaco. He's, you know, 24 uh, years in the Navy, SEAL Team, SEAL Team 6, Dev Group, and then 11 years, good guy, CIA, who also teaches remote viewing. And this is everything that I see and I feel and I intuit both from a three-dimensional black and white information. And then you also kind of go out there and channel it and feel into it. So you've got Assange up and we see Snowden back on the channels too, um, coming out with the information, right? And how amazing is that? I think everybody, John, if I were them in the audience, would take, should take a moment to just reflect on how grateful you are to be here at this point in time. Let's regardless of the weather stuff going on, regardless of the political climate going on, think about this, right? When it was rolled out, there's supposed to be 35,000 guillotines in Obamacare that were rolled out. And all of us, you and me, in FEMA concentration camps with our heads cut off, multiple jab turned into robots. That's a true fact. Mm -hmm. The fact. Three years ago, even saying that, you know, we're kicked off of all platforms, even when you point to the documentation of such fact. Right? So they've turned this all against them. And again, in a military operation or a good law enforcement operation, what you do is you have the enemy's assets. And once you have get those assets, repatriate them for your use. And here we are. Now the FEMA camps are going to be their prisons. We're seeing the Guam, the Gitmos and those bases continuing to be built up. And we're using their fiat currency and we're hanging on to the gold so that when we get through this dark night of the soul of the world, then we have that beautiful epiphany of the new dawn. And this is an era of the golden age of prosperity for everybody. John, here's a here's a thing that I think people will have a, 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 a tough time sometimes, depending on your financial status. Remember, everybody, you're talking to a guy whose personal bank accounts were seized, emptied, and closed, right? And I had $400 to my name a year ago this month, right? And then those were closed, right? So they want to they wanna stop you and take you down. So I'm coming from the standpoint of I know what it's like to be broke or under financial hardship on top of the fact I have to live on other continents and do my show like I'm doing right now, right? I'm not in America. I'm not in Canada. I'm not with my family. I'm not with my friends. And they are are, are facing everything you're facing right now, too. Good point. And, Short, and shortly. Uh, shortly. Yeah, sorry. The point being shortly, oh, yeah. that finance isn't going to matter to us. And that's I, how amazing it will be in a few months time to maybe, maybe, maybe two years, maybe at the maximum. We're worried about money right now. Guess what? We're going to be in the Star Trek age like this before you know it. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have money. It's about the spiritual wealth in the community and living for yourself and how you serve others. Amazing. That's yeah. where. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, we really, I don't know if you know much about our channel, but we focus heavily on the wealth transfer for God, Jesus giving people and everything that we're Man. seeing is, is way, and, and you're being conservative, which I get, but but we will step on a limb and say, I think it's going to be even sooner than what you're proclamating because um, 
you know, the whole point of this is we have to give Jesus Christ the glory and all the people he's appointed in the various military people who are all about, you know, bond servant and sacrificing for you know, like yeah. Jesus did first John laying his life down yep. for, for another, for someone else that's at yep. the heart of the military, whether that's American, Canadian, whatever, there's still a, a common thread there. So we, we thank you for your service on top of that. Um, but there's some very exciting stuff as a pivot to the last point for today, Brad, because we'll definitely have you back on. This subject is too versed to just nail down one podcast. But uh, we're very excited about what's going on with respect to the nation of Iraq. Uh, yep. They're Amazing. getting ready. To, they're before the end of this year, well before the end of this year. They have, I don't know if you saw our telegram, but um, I put our- I saw Sudani's speech at the UN. And I think a day later, you text me. I'm like, yeah, it was amazing. Yes, right? I did. I am on your telegram too. Yes. Well, thank, thank you. We, we appreciate that. Because we put an article out today. If you've seen it already, I apologize. But for the audience, no may have, um, the article is specifying that Iraq is talking about an upsurge or an uptick of population with respect to construction in the new zones. We know part of the coming back on the international stage is them uh, not just bringing back the currency, but they have to pass international laws, taxes, and tariffs at the border, re reconstruction of all the zones, airports, the largest uh, the Central Bank of Iraq building is going to be one of the largest buildings in the Middle East, supplanting those in Dubai, which is known as a first-rate country. So Iraq deserves that that uh, that pilgrimage or privilege uh, right as well. Yeah. And so they're talking about going back to the you know de-dollarizing uh, before the end of the year and uh, reinstituting the private sector where the real rate is. It's not on the forex. So you right. have a lot of people out there saying, oh, you know, of course, what, you know, whether it's other channels or it's just even, you know, uh, you know, Fox Business, CNBC, Forbes, Yahoo, the whole lot of them, Wall, Wall Street Journal. Oh, this is Iraq's true rate. But we know that isn't true. That that is a manipulated, suppressed rate, the real rates in the private sector, as I mentioned. So we're very okay. excited about that. We see the prophetic word of Kim Clement, if you're familiar, coming to pass with the secret nuclear power plants of Iran imminently to be attacked. That will be a misdirect, as you said, look here, not here. People yeah. are going to look and see Israel, but they won't see Iraq and they won't see XRP, which, by the way, is already yeah. part of the BRICS. We got the sun right. in less than two weeks. So with all that yeah. said, just put awesome. your take on that, if you would, about what you're seeing in the next couple of weeks, please. I say everybody listen to John exactly, right? Because you have BRICS happening in Moscow. You got 150 countries uh, apparently at last count, according to BRICS on X, this is from them, you know, that have applied for it. You're all set to go. You already had the soccer ball hand up from President Putin to President Trump. Balls in your court, sir. Here we go, right? The BRICS alliance. And as soon as the fiat currency craters, and I've had Dave XRP line on the show, and I'm, be I'm not best friends. I'm very good friends with Jimmy Valley and a few others, right? It, you've got that immediate switch. When you flip one switch off, then you've got to immediately come in with the other one. You don't just to, to say, hey, the water's contaminated. Let's shut it off and wait 30 days and see who makes it 30 days and start it. Like, no, it's going to be that immediate flip and switch over is my personal read on this, John. And this is a great warm up for everybody too. remember, like you said, the, the misdirect, the abracadabra. Look at all the war stuff going over here, the drums, the weather warfare, everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And yes, mm -hmm. some of that is real. But on the other side, what's happening that you don't see that's not being reported on, that's the most important, significant stuff often for the grander plan to save the world. And that's a big part of it. Economic stability, the national or the global economic security and reformation act. We need to be able to trade, to barter, more coffee beans down in Colombia, more gold in Zimbabwe and Ghana. Awesome. Vietnamese dong. Maybe they're rice, right? So now you can tokenize rice in Vietnam and Cambodia because they might not have the earth minerals that are precious metals in God's world. So here we are at this beautiful time. And, um, you know, I want to give credit where it's due to Bishop Jim O'Connor, who's a personal friend, U.S. Army West Point grad, 76, has done 36 successful exorcisms, has access to the 777 books of the Bible. That's right, folks. And wow. he has done the biblical decodes on things. He'd be a great one for the show as well, because he and Bo Polnoy talk as well. But again, Bishop Jim O'Connor, exorcist, right? A divined man who has served as well 20 years in the U.S. Army as an infantry company commander and an airborne major, mm -hmm. airborne outfit major. And here's what he says, you know, gold is God's money. And we have all these other precious metals. And God has to make sure that the people are worthy enough to receive it. 
And to me, that's a take on that hostage rescue scenario I provided. We are the hostages. We need to do our part as hostages in a rescue environment so that when the terrorists are gone and off the scene, then we can start to rebuild like we see Iraq. And I think Iraq is the first chip to fall, so to speak, but in a very good way. You know, this is the signal in Persia, that beautiful homeland in the Middle East yep. for where we have the Abraham Accords, right? People will remember where we're going to see the birth, a wellspring of prosperity to which nobody in the world has ever seen before in eons. Mm -hmm. And it will be for everybody in the world. And financial prosperity will be the least thing you think about in the next six months or two years. It's yeah. the spiritual prosperity that we all have living in peace, love, and harmony with each other, with technology, which has been re-inhabited, re-inhabited upon our world, which you're going to love. No, I agree. The, the money is a means to an end. It's a gateway to being able to not, to, to be able to do acts of service uh, to the Lord. And, and so our whole channel is, in, you know, divested to, you know, bringing on people like you that can, can, you know, paint it from a different vantage point to get the same point across, which is that we're, we're transitioning from, the darkness of the enemy to the light because God's people have to be the light in the darkness. We're supposed to be Kings and Queens, Kings and Queens yep. don't live in squalor and lack. They have abundance. Right. So they can be generous. That is what we're, what we're driving at. And you're, you're helping that. And, and just so you know, uh, which you probably already know, Vietnam has some of the richest Brent crude in the ocean of tons of silver. Uh, they're, they're tapped tasked out. They have workforce of 34% GDP over the last several years, since 2010, they've been a powerhouse, so uh, they're they're just going to get uh, communism removed enough out of their country where they can finally break free. Um, Brad, we know you're pressed for time, so we'll have you on again. But uh, where can people find your work, and and what thoughts do you have for the audience today? Thanks very much, John. Appreciate that. Uh, you know, thoughts for the audience are uh, remain focused on our beautiful future. Um, and uh, there's a re real key term: observe, don't absorb. And so, yes, you can acknowledge and prayer works. Prayer, prayer is 100% verifiable. Science has proven the mysticism, right? Evidence-based science. Prayer works. Go to Dr. Masuro Moto, right? The water, creation of water. It works. That's prayer. That comes from your heart center. Remember, your heart center is 40,000 times more powerful than your brain. So connect your heart, mind together and send that out and focus on beautiful future and creating it and bringing it upon you with grace. And the final thing is the way to find me is on Rumble. Unfortunately, uh, because of all the stuff that I've done and what you've already read about my bio, it's the only way. I don't even have a website. Um, you know, it's been, uh, I've had an infiltrator actually building a website and then that was it. They kind of took it off. So uh, right now, rumble.com forward slash C for channel forward slash the sovereign soul. And we are all the sovereign souls that God has divined it to us, right? Our sovereign right and power. And we're returning to sovereignty in God. And that's what we're about here on the Sovereign Soul Show. Love it. I'll get that out. To, uh, we'll put that link in the description. Also to our sponsors, uh, if you are looking to get gold and silver, precious metals, uh, or if you're looking to get foreign currencies, bonds, or uh, Zimbabwe bonds, Iraq, Benar, Vietnamese Dong, uh, Venezuelan Boulevard, and the entire lot, we'll also leave that link as well. Brad Wozni, thank you for joining us, sir. We appreciate having you here. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. Thank you so much, John. Thank you so much to the audience. I look forward to coming back. God bless you all. God bless.